Welcome back everyone to another game dev tutorial. Today we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to look at how I implemented an auto tiler for my base builder game Spruce. As you may know, one of the problems with rendering tile maps is that they often look blocky. Because our grid is square and our tiles are square, obviously the outcome is going to look pretty square. But as game developers, we like our games to look more natural, so we try to avoid this problem as best we can. One of the solutions here is to use a tile set which allows us to build a more connected blob of tiles. Often we have some edge on the blob, kind of like you see here with the patch of grass or the body of water. To build blobs like these, you you basically have different edge tiles which can outline any blob shape. Then you have fill tiles in the middle which are solid. Because our blobs can be in many different shapes, we need a set of edge tiles that we can construct to handle all of our cases. To build this set of edge tiles, we need to look at all the possible neighboring tile configurations and decide how we want to connect those. Luckily, others have done this for us and come up with 48 tiles that we can draw once and tile forever, but even after our 48 tile tile set. Now we have to draw the blobs manually, which can get pretty tedious. This is where auto tilers come into play. Auto tilers will basically choose the perfect tile for every situation. That way we don't need to draw individual corners, we can just draw a blob of grass and it'll automatically get tiled for us. Most engines support some sort of auto tiling feature, but it's actually not that difficult to build ourselves. I'm not going to go into detail on how you draw a tile map, that just requires you to loop over a 2D array and draw a sprite for each index. The question that auto tilers will answer is, which sprite do I draw at this index? To answer this question, we need to look at all eight of the neighbors. We will build a bitmask starting at the tile above our current tile and rotating clockwise around all of the neighboring tiles. At each neighbor, we will check if the neighbor is the same tile type. So basically, if you're drawing grass, we will check if the neighboring tile is also grass. We can we can pack this information into a bit mask where we set the bit to 1 if the tile matches and set the bit to 0 if the tile doesn't match. This will construct an 8-bit number causing us to handle 256 different possibilities. But as promised, we can reduce these 256 different possibilities down to 48 with one simple trick, ignoring corners if the edges around them are not also set. What this means practically is that we will clear each corner's position in the bit mask if the edges around it are not already set. For example, we will clear bit mask position 1 if bit mask positions 0 and 2 are not set. Here's a function which computes one of the 48 possible tile numbers based on a boolean for every neighbor. First we clear corners if the edges aren't set, then we add each bit mask index by shifting the number 1 to the correct bit position then adding it to our total. Now that we have a number, we need to correlate it to our set of sprites. If we look back at our tile sheet template, we can assign numbers to each sprite in much the same way as we computed them before. We can also use similar rules to tile fences and pipes. The only difference in these cases is that we are no longer handling a blob of tiles, we are handling lines of tiles. Because of this, we never consider corner tile connections at all. We only consider edge tile connections. This means that we will never set corner tile bits, which actually reduces the number of tile cases to 16. The final important topic here is what I'm going to call layering. When we have a lot of different tile types like dirt, sand, grass, and water, it becomes unfeasible to draw each tile type connecting to every other tile type. So I opted to draw each tile type as a patch that sits on top of previously drawn layers. Then I construct each layer in ascending order, starting with the dirt layer which sits on the bottom. This makes it so that I don't have to worry about two tile types intersecting, because one will always be drawn on top of another. Thanks for watching. If you like this and want to see more, be sure to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.